Hello, <coughs> my name is Dr. Jeff Defoe and I'm an Associate Professor in Mechanical Automotive and Materials Engineering. Welcome to Aerospace Propulsion. I've taught this course twice before in the summers of both 2018 and 2019. <coughs> this term uh, is summer 2020 is the first time that I'll be teaching this course fully online. I want to give you a little bit of background about myself so that uh, you know hopefully you, you, you believe the things that I have to tell you in this course. My PhD is in air breathing propulsion from MIT um, and most of my background is in the aerodynamics, thermodynamics and acoustics of jet engines. So I'm definitely qualified to teach this course. <laughs> uh, I worked as a senior research fellow at the Whittle Laboratory at the University of Cambridge between my PhD and becoming a professor here at Windsor. And for those, those of you who don't know, which I assume is probably most of you, the, the Whittle Lab is the, the premier uh, turbo machinery, uh, exper sorry, experimental turbo machinery research lab in the world, um, uh, named after Sir Frank Whittle, who was the inventor of the jet engine. I've also been fortunate enough to have extensive interactions with and mentorship from Professor Nick Cumstey um, at Imperial College London in the UK. Um, and and that, that's the main author of our course textbook, so I know him personally quite well, um, and the book is outstanding. I'll talk more about that in the first lecture. In my teaching, as well as in my research for that matter, I like to focus on conceptual understanding of the flow physics um, and emphasize how that uh, physics tells us what devices, whether we're talking about aircraft or engines, should look like when we're dealing with aerospace engineering. So that's enough about me. I want to take a few minutes and give you a little bit of an introduction to the course Blackboard site. And the reason that I want to do that is that I'm using several tools in Blackboard that there's a pretty good chance you may not have seen before. These uh, are course messages, virtual classroom, discussion boards, um, and a few other organizational bits. So let's start with course messages. The course messages is essentially an internal email system just within the course Blackboard site. I'm teaching quite a, quite a few classes this semester and so to try to keep the, uh, my, my regular email inbox from getting overwhelmed I've decided to use this course messages tool for all of my classes um, to contain the messages there. So this works just like an email system. So I'm in my student pre preview right now in uh, Blackboard, so I'm seeing what you'd see as a student. Let's say I wanted to go in and compose a message. Um, I could go create message. I could send it to, uh, say, the instructor, me. And the message could be uh, testing. Um, and then um, I hope this works. <laughs> and then I send that. And now I see it here in the send folder. And if I were to exit the student preview and go back in under my faculty profile, I'd see an unread message in my inbox. I'd be able to open that up and reply to it just like I would with an email. The main purpose with which, or the main reason that you'd use course messages is when you want to have private communication between yourself uh, and me. So, for example, if you wanted to discuss a grade on something, um, or, you know, things like that that you wouldn't want to be in a public discussion. Generally, I would say questions about the course material shouldn't be asked through course messages. Instead, they should be asked through the discussion board so that others can benefit from the ensuing responses. And I'll demonstrate that tool shortly. The next thing that I want to talk about is the virtual classroom. The virtual classroom is a uh, something you probably experienced uh, towards the end of last semester when everything suddenly shifted online. I've got the course room locked right now. We'll unlock it when we'll use it, which will primarily be for the tutorials on Monday afternoons. But basically you'll go in here and then we'll have live sessions where um, we can work on some conceptual and, and numerical problems together and you can get some help with homework and other aspects of the course. We'll also use virtual classroom for my office hours but not this room. There's a special link in the syllabus uh, that you, you use to get to uh, the virtual classroom for my office hours. And the reason for that is that 
uh, I needed to have one common location for the multiple courses that I'm teaching. So it couldn't be part of the single course website. So that's why there's a special link there. The next thing I want to talk about is the discussion boards. The discussion boards are forums. Like, so it's like Reddit um, or things like other websites like that. So essentially there are, there are forum topics. Uh, me as the instructor, I can create new forums. Um, right now I have three, ask a question. So this would be about course material. Technical challenges, so posts about issues with sort of the Blackboard site and the various things you need to do with it. And then emerging issues and ideas essentially for things that sort of don't really fit into either of those two. Uh, and I may add more of these as the course goes on if, if needed. But basically this just works just like I go to ask a question. This works just like you, you might think I could create a thread. Test thread for demonstration. Here's a post. And I could attach a file if I wanted, or I can submit. And there we go. Now in the ask a, uh, in the ask a question forum, there is a thread created here, and other users could go in and respond. Um, so students could respond to this, um, or the instructor could, re uh, you know, me could could respond to this. So um, this is a great way to emulate the kind of informal interactions that would often occur in class when a student asks a question or uh, maybe you know, during class or, or maybe approaches the instructor to ask something at the start of class or at the end, right? So these are um, anything where there might be a benefit for others to hear what the response is or to have a discussion around what an answer is to a question, right? That all should be taking place in these discussion forums. The next thing I want to bring your attention to is this survey. Um, a few students have responded already, I think uh, three or four or something, um, and, and which is great. But so this is a, a, a quick survey for those who haven't done it. It's a four questions, yes or no answers. Your answers are anonymous. And essentially, um, this is just making sure that you've got all the equipment and access you need. And so far, it seems like everyone's got everything that they need um, to be able to, to, to do the course. But if you come through this, and you do this and you see that you've got some no answers, you may want to use the course messages module to privately message me and we'll see what we can figure out to try to help you out. So the final thing I want to talk about is the way that the Blackboard site itself is organized. You see in the left hand panel here, um, I've got sort of some basic things at the top, the announcements and course messages, the course long resources which we went through some of, and then sort of the survey and then week one. All right, so uh, right now there's just a social contract here. Lecture one will be here soon. So it's organized chronologically by week. The study week doesn't count, uh, so it's not here. Um, so as the course progresses, there will be items that will sort of fill up under the, the heading of each week. Um, in the subsequent weeks, normally there'll be two lectures that'll be posted on Monday and on Wednesday. Um, those will uh, be uh, either a pre-recorded video plus some slides um, or for some of the lectures um, that are that where the material is covered really well in the textbook um, since this is a fourth year course um, I'll just post the slides and in the slides there may be a few links um, to wherever the most challenging concepts are and you click those links and it's going to pop you over to a YouTube video of me giving a more in-depth explanation of whatever that trickier concept is. So that's basically how the course is going to work um, in terms of the actual content and how assessments are going to work and all that. I'll talk about that when I go through the syllabus in detail in lecture one. But for now, I just wanted to say hello, welcome to the course, and I'm looking forward to um, having some discussions with you in discussion boards and course messages over the coming few days, and then hopefully to talking to most of you live during virtual classroom uh, next Monday uh, during the first tutorial. Thank you.